So here we again look at our modulo 6 counter and we're going to try to apply our reduced dependency state assignment approach to this counter. So let us recall this counter. It has six different states, S0 to S5. If the input i is a zero, then we go three steps forward. So we add three modulo six to our counter. And if the input i equals one, then we subtract two. That is, we take minus two modulo six, which is the same thing as taken plus four modulo six. So in our state transition graph, for example, if we are in S zero and get a zero as an input, we go to S three. And if we have a one as an input, we will add four, which is the same as subtracting two. So we go to S four in this case. And similarly for all the other states. And what we can see when we look at the state transition graph is that this is kind of symmetric in a sense. And this is something that we can take advantage of in our reduced dependency algorithm. So the best approach when we do this algorithm is to first write our state transition table. So we just say that for each state, which state do we go to when we have a zero as an input and when we have a one as an input. And then we enumerate this for all the different states that we have. So we apply our reduced dependency algorithm for this state transition table. And recall here what we want to do is that we want to, for each pair of states, we want to start with a partition for this pair of states and then we want to extend our partitions and say that if we have a zero as an input to the states in that partition, we want to go to the same partition for those states. And similarly, if we have a one as an input, we also want to go to that same partition for all the states in our partition. So let us start with the first pair of states that we're going to call P01. So here we make a partition of the states S0, S1. And if we now look at the zero input for these two states, we see that we go to state S3 and S4, which means that we want S3 and S4 to be in the same partition. And for a one input, we go to state S4 and S5 respectively. So we want S4 and S5 to also be in the same partition. So this leaves us with a new partition where we have S0, S1 as before. And we also now have the partition saying that S3 S4 and S5 should also be in this same partition. If we now look at the states 3, 4 and 5 here, if we have a 0 as an input, we want S0, S1 and S2 to be in the same partition. And we also want S1, S2 and S3 to be in the same partition. And if we now, for example, want one and two to be in the same partition, and we at the same time want one and three to be in the same partition, well, it means that we need to merge our two partitions here. So the new partition can be written as S0, S1, S2, S3, S4, S5. Which unfortunately is not of very much use for us. Instead, let us try another pair of states. So we do the partition S0, S2 as our starting partition. And then we look at the states S0 and S2. So 0 and 2, if we have a 0 as an input, we want S3 and S5 to be in the same partition. And we also want S4 and S0 to be in the same partition. This will give us the new partitions here where we do S 0 S2 will add our S4 state and then we have a new partition containing S3 and S5. So now we continue using these two partitions. So let us see the partition now S0 S2 S4. So we added S4 to this partition which means that we want S1, S3 and S5 to be in the same partition. And for the one input, we see that we want S0, S2, S4 to be in the same partition. 
So S0, S2 and S4 are already in the same partition. So this works out well. And for the zero input, we want that S1, S3 and S5 to be in the same partition. So we add S1 to this partition here where we had previously S1 and S3. So this seemed to work out nicely for the S0, S2 and S4 partition. But let us look at the S1, S3, S5 partition then. So we have the S1 partition, 3 and 5, which means that we want S4, S0 and S2 to be in the same partition. Well, they already are. And we also want S5, S1 and S3 to be in the same partition. Well, they already are. So we have found our final partition here that we are going to use in our reduced dependency state assignment. But let us continue because there could be other partitions that could be of use for us. So we start out with S0, S3 in this partition here. So we look at state S0 and S3 and we want S0 and S3 to be in the same partition because this is the states that we transition to with the zero input. And this is already in the same partition, so we can write S0, S3 here in our next step. And we also want S1 and S4 to be in the same partition. So we add S1 and S4 as a new partition because none of these are contained in the S0, S3 partition. So now let us continue here and look at S1, S4. So let us look at the states S1 and S4. In this case, we want S4 and S1 to be in the same partition. Well, they already are. And we also want S5 and S2 to be in the same partition. Well, neither S2 or S5 have been used in other partitions, so we can add this as a single new partition. So the new partitions we have here are S0, S3, we have S1, S4, and we have S2, S5. And finally, now we want to check the partition S2 and S5. So we look at the states S2 and S5 in our state transition table, and we see that we want S5 to be in the same partition as S2. Well, this is the partition we already created. And we want also S0 to be in the same partition as S2. 3, but this is also the partition that we already have. So here again, we have found a partition of our states that we can use in our reduced dependency state assignment. And we can see that already at this point, we have all the information that we need in order to do our state assignment. So for P02, we have two different partitions, which means that we can use one bit in order to separate these two partitions. So we can say, for example, that we have a zero in common for the first partition, that is for S0, S2 and S4, and then we will have a one in common for S1, S3 and S5. In the third partition, P03, we have three different partitions, which means that we can use, for example, 00, 0 in common for S0, S3, we could use 1, 1 in common for S1, S4, and we can use, for example, 0, 1 in common for S2 and S5. But to follow our algorithm, we need to do this for all pairs of states, which means that we would have 15 such pairs of states that we need to start with and then see what will be our resulting partitions for the states. And if we do this, we would get this result. So the first three here are what we did by hand. And then if we continue, we have 12 more that we need to do. And we can see that when we do these 12, we will sometimes get the same partition that we got for P02. So we see this in several places here. And sometimes we will get the same partition as we got for P03. And we can see this in two other places here. And sometimes we get just the complete set of state when we do this for the other cases. So what we're going to use now is exactly these two partitions or sets of partitions that we got for P02 and P03 when we do our state assignment. 
So let us do the state assignment here and we're going to use exactly the suggestion that we had before. So what we can see here is that for S0, S2 and S4, we want to have a zero in common. And for the other states, we want to have a one in common here when we put the state variable Q1 as this bit. And for the set of partitions P03, we say that we want for S0 and S3 to have a zero, zero in common. So we write it like this. And then for S1 and S4, we want to have one, one in common. So we add one, one to S1 and we add one, one to S4. And for S2 and S5, we want to have a zero, one in common. So we add zero, one to S2 and S5 for the Q2 and Q3 state variables. And if we look at our state transition table, we can fill out this as S0, when we have a zero as an input, we go to S3. So here we go to one, zero, zero. And with the one input, we have S4, which is zero, one, one. For S1, we will have with a zero input S4, which is zero, one, one. And with a one input, we have S5, which is one, zero, one. For S2, with a zero input, we have S5, so one, zero, one. And with a one input, we have S0, which is zero, zero, zero. For S3, if we have a zero input, we go to S0. So we have zero, zero, zero here. If we have a one input, we go to S1. So we have one, one, one. And then for S4 with a zero input, we go to S1, which we called one, one, one. And with a one input, we go to S2, which we called zero, zero, one. And finally for S5, if we have a zero input, we go to S2, which we called zero, zero, one. And with a one input, we go to S3, which we called one, zero, zero. And now from this state transition table, we can fill in our Carnot maps. So what we do here is that we write Q1, Q2 here as the rows and Q3 and X as the columns. So looking at the first row here in our state transition table, we see that when we are in state zero, 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 which are these three zeros here, and we get the input zero, we will go to the next state, which is one, zero, zero. And if we have a one as an input, we go to zero, one, one. And for the next row here in our state transition table, we are in state S1, represented as one, one, and one. So this is these two columns for the third row. So if we have a zero as an input, we go to zero, one, one. So here we write zero, one, one. And if we have a one as an input, we go to one, zero, one. So we write one, zero, one. And for the third row here, we are in state S2, which we called zero, zero, one. So we have zero, zero, and one. So we are in the first row and the third and fourth columns. So if we have a zero as an input here, we go to one, zero, one. So we write one, zero, one. And with a one as an input, we go to zero, zero, zero. And then we continue to the fourth row in the state transition table. And we look at S3, which we call one, zero, zero. So this is one, zero, which is the bottom row. And then we have zero. So we have the first two columns here. And here we go to zero, zero, zero with a zero input and we go to one, one, one with a one input. And now we go to S4 here. So this we call zero, one, one. So we are in the second row and we are in the third and the fourth columns. And if we have a zero as an input, we go to one, one, one. And if we have a one as an input, we go to zero, zero, one. And for the last row here, we have S5, which we call one, zero, one. So this is the fourth row and the third and the fourth columns. So if we have a zero as an input, we go to zero, zero, one. So we have zero, zero, one. And if we have a one as an input, we go to one, 
zero, zero. And since we only have six states defined, there will be some input combinations that cannot happen in our Boolean functions. So we write these as don't care terms, which we have in these four different places in our Carnot maps. And now using our Carnot maps, we want to find our prime implicants. So we have one prime implicant here that covers three of our ones together with one of the don't care terms. And then we have one prime implicant here, which covers the rest three ones together with another don't care term. For the second Carnot map, we will have one prime implicant here. We will have another prime implicant here. And these two prime implicants will cover all our ones. And we're using all our don't care terms in this case in order to cover our ones. And for the final Carnot map, we will have one very large prime implicant here that takes advantage of all our don't care terms. And then we have two relatively large prime implicants, one here and one here that covers the rest of our ones. All the prime implicants that we have found here are essential. So we can write now our Boolean functions, one for Q1+, plus, which can be written as Q1 prime x prime or Q1 x. For Q2 plus, we will have the two essential primes represented as Q2 x prime or Q3 prime x. And finally for Q3 plus, we will have our large prime implicant, which is only Q2, or our two somewhat smaller ones, which are Q3 prime x, and we have also Q3 x prime. If you want to count the total number of implicants that we need here, we can just note that these two are actually the same implicant. So actually we will have six different prime implicants here. So when realizing this function, we have six implicants.